Hello you all. In this video I will show you my improved pyrolysis reactor which pyrolytically turns plastic waste into combustible gases and pyrolysis oil, this oil can be refined into gasoline and diesel. This video is only a test run of the system without measuring the gas consumption or the weight of the used plastic. Exact data will be collected for the next video. But the process will be explained in this video and also how to build such a reactor. So at first we have to fill the reaction vessel with polymers. For this I used all sorts of stuff, normal household plastic waste like, shampoo bottles, packaging, but also some of my lab wastes like, lab coats and gloves. To get a good amount of waste in the reactor without shredding it, I compressed everything down with a metal rod and a wooden one. So when the reactor is filled we have to clean the flange that the ceiling is tight. I am using Garlock metal seals for this run which were kindly sponsored by them. They are the high class of ceilings and can stand 700 degrees Celsius with ease, also they are resistant to almost all acids, bases and hydrocarbons you encounter. So they are just perfect for my application. The Garlock seals are made out of a hard metal ring which is filled with softer metal rings and some kind of chemical resistant filler in between the soft metal rings. When you compress the sealing in a flange the soft metal is compressed and closes the seal. You have to make sure that the screws you are using can handle the conditions you are putting them in. So for example my screws have to handle quite high temperatures, if you build the reactor with a side feed, your flange is not in the direct heat, so the seal and the screws you are using can be low tech, like a gas sealing rope. But back to our setup. As you can see we tighten the screws quite rough to ensure that the seal is tight. And now the part where I show you how cheap I am. We need to flush the reaction vessel with carbon dioxide, so the heated polymers are not oxidizing. The oxidation would form water and very toxic dioxins. But back to the carbon dioxide, you could buy it, which is expensive like hell, you could also make it from lab grade carbonates and a acid, which is also still expensive. So due to the fact that I have 20 liters of hydrochloric acid that I got as a gift we use the cheapest form of carbonate, some gravel. With this cheap carbon dioxide generator we flush the reaction vessel for 10 minutes until all of the oxygen should be gone. Then we install the K-type thermometer that will give us the approximate temperature in the heating chamber. When everything is set up and ready we ignite the self-made burner and insert it into the chamber. The burner is a simple design, I welded a 1 inch plug into a T pipe piece and drilled a 1.5 mm hole for a nozzle into the plug. The so created fuel flow sucks air with it thus creating a fuel air mixture. This burns with a blue flame once the chamber walls are hot enough to ignite all of the fuel air mix. And now to the chamber. It is insulated with two layers of ceramic fiber and a layer of fire clay on top to make the surface more resistant against the direct contact of the flame. Both insulation materials are rated to hold up to 1215 degrees Celsius. And now to the whole reactor. The system is simple. From the propane fuel bottle the burner is fed and heats the reaction chamber. Due to the insulation this process is more efficient than the old design. But I still have to insulate the lid. The created vapor is traveling up the pipe into the condenser. In the condenser the vapor is condensed into a liquid and collected in the storage vessel. In the storage vessel the liquid oil remains and the gases travel to the flare to be burned. The condenser is hooked up to the cooling water with the counter current principle to get the best cooling results. The idea behind such a system is that the reaction conditions are chosen in a way that the produced gas is enough to keep the pyrolysis going. The problem with such a system is that it costs a lot of money to build and you need a gas compression. Now more to the pyrolysis, in the process hydrocarbons are heated in the absence of oxygen, when they reach around 400 degrees Celsius the long hydrocarbon chains break apart into smaller pieces which are not solid any longer but liquid. Due to the high temperature in the reaction vessel the newly formed hydrocarbons evaporate and travel to the condenser where they are turned back into a liquid. As a reference the higher the reaction temperature the shorter the chains, the shorter the chains the lower the boiling point. This process should be seen as an opportunity to turn plastic waste into fuel. 
This on one hand gets rid of the plastic waste and on the other reduces the amount of oil we have to newly extract from the earth to make gasoline and diesel. Such a pyrolysis plant could use approximately 40% of the plastic waste's energy to sustain the reaction and turn the other 60% into oil. In developing countries where plastic waste is a big problem and plastic is polluting the whole landscape people could be paid to bring plastic waste to such a pyrolysis plant. This would generate a market economic environment where throwing plastic away means throwing money away. I got around 3 liters of pyrolysis oil in this run. If you want to see how to turn this into diesel and petrol watch my video on it. And here in the analysis data from the Fraction 7 produced in my purification video you can see that, most of the fraction is toluene followed by all sorts of hydrocarbons from C8 to C10, these are cyclic, branched, saturated and unsaturated so a carcinogenic mix like in normal oil. And there is also some styrene in there which most likely comes from polystyrene. This makes us some problems because the free double bond polymerizes over time and alternates the properties of the oil. So a hydration of the oil should be performed. So stay tuned for this project and the upcoming new videos, on the process, more detailed data, improvements and how to make real petrol and gasoline out of the oil. If you liked the video you can like it, if you like my content, then consider following me. So only one thing left to say. Have fun and do not kill yourself.